Good evening, everyone. So our first talk today will be by Professor Pranav Sardar from Iser Mohali, and he will be talking about groups, negative curvature, and combination theorems. Professor Sardar. Thank you very much, Arun, and uh, I also thank uh, Somo and other organizers for allowing me to speak here. So, okay, so I'll go on. So, so first introduction. So what is this uh, combination theorems? Uh, what is this all about? So what are combination theorems? So in geometric group theory and combinatorial group theory, sometimes we start with the collection of groups with certain properties, and uh, then we try to construct new groups out of these uh, uh, these groups, following some procedure, and we ask if uh, the new group that we construct is uh, is again inside this collection so these type of theorems are called combination theorems okay and uh, in this collect uh, in this uh, uh, talk this collection of uh, groups c will be finitely generated infinite groups with some negative curvature property that i i will define next and uh, this uh, the, the process of combining these groups so this will be uh, the graphs of groups construction or more generally uh, uh, complexes of groups construction and something uh, uh, a little different from this but more or less uh, these are the two procedures that we follow so first of all uh, i will introduce these objects these groups c so this is the first part of the, the talk so the collection c of groups so there are three groups that i will introduce the first one is the hyperbolic groups so i will need some definitions so uh, suppose G is a group with a generating set S. So generally, we'll assume it is a finite generating set. Uh, towards the very end, I will I will need infinite generating set. But most of the time, we work with a finite generating set. Then the KD graph uh, of this group with respect to the generator uh, set S, gamma G S. So this is a graph where the vertex set is G, and the pair of vertices G comma H is joined by an edge. If h equal to g s for some element small s in capital S, so this is the Kelly graph. So, for instance, if you take the uh, integers, then and suppose I take uh, 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 the generating set to be the one containing uh, simply the number one. Okay, so then n will be connected with n plus one for all n. So essentially, we'll get the real line in that case. But in general, so if I take a group G and a generating set S, then it, it is easy to see that this group gamma G S it is a connected graph. And uh, what we do is that we assign length one to every edge in this graph, and this makes it into a metric space. Because given two vertices, we just find edge paths joining these two vertices, and then we we find the minimum of a length of such paths, and that we define as the distance between the vertices. So this this Find the metric on this thing, and the length minimizing paths. This this we refer to as uh, geodesics. Uh, so the, the Kelly graphs. So these are graphs, but we work with more general graphs also, where where edges are allowed to have any possible length, any positive length. Okay, but uh, 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 but yeah. So to make it into metric space, we all, we always work with graphs which are connected. So I use the notation v x for uh, the vertices. And e x for the edges of a graph x, we we need that given a pair of uh, vertices v w, there is a geodesic joining them. There is a length minimizing edge path joining them. So our graphs are like this only all the time. Although although the lengths can be uh, different, but uh, we need this kind of thing because uh, we have to talk about the properties of geodesics in a graph and so on. So now I define uh, hyperbolic groups and hyperbolic graphs. So what is a hyperbolic graph? So uh, a graph is called so again it's connected graph. So uh, a graph is called hyperbolic if there is a constant delta bigger than equal to zero. So that given three vertices x, y, z, and any three geodesics joining this x, y, z. So I have a triangle kind of thing. Then the side x, y, the geodesic joining x, y is contained in the delta neighborhood or the union of the remaining two sides. So in the picture below, so I I don't know whether you can see. So uh, there is a, a a red 
uh, thing that is uh, supposed to mean the Delta neighborhood of YZ and the green one that is supposed to be the Delta neighborhood of uh, XZ and uh, as in the picture so XY is contained in the union of these two thickened uh, uh, line okay and then we say that uh, group G is hyperbolic if for some generating set S this scaly graph gamma G S is hyperbolic matrix I mean hyperbolic graph okay we define hyperbolic graph so if the Kelly graph is a hyperbolic uh, 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 graph, then we call the group G hyperbolic. So yeah, so properties. So hyperbolic groups. Uh, so uh, so basically, this uh, this kind of uh, this this uh, picture, this triangle kind of picture. This is very typical of a tree. So if, if I have a tree and if I take uh, three points, then uh, the geodesic. Uh, so the, given any pair of points, there is a unique geodesic connecting uh, them in a tree. And then you can see the tree uh, in the tree, all the geodesic triangles they look like tripod. So in fact, in this case, delta can be chosen to be zero. Okay. And another place where this kind of phenomena happens is uh, typically hyperbolic space HN. There also uh, uh, all the triangles. Are, so this property that there is a delta, we, we refer to this as saying that triangles are delta stream. So this uh, delta streamless thing also happens in uh, hyperbolic spaces okay so that is why the hyperbolic hyper, so I, as i said the titan set uh, groups with negative curvature property so that is the reason behind uh, calling this hyperbolicity or negative curvature property so triangles are slim so the first important point here is that uh, uh, although we say that uh, kelly graph is hyperbolic but kelly graph depends uh, on the generating set uh, so i have to uh, stress here that Whenever I am saying the Kelly graph is hyperbolic, here I mean the generating set is finite. Okay, so the fact number one is that it does not depend on the finite generating set. Although if you choose a different uh, uh, generating set, then your delta will be different. Delta uh, delta may be very big, but you don't worry about that one. So uh, you just happy uh, that this is hyperbolic. Okay, so this hyperbolicity does not depend on the particular finite generating set. Okay. So next is that, so hyperbolic groups have many interesting properties. So this is one reason why one should uh, 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 study hyperbolic groups, but I will not have a scope uh, to go into properties of hyperbolic uh, uh, groups, okay. And uh, then the most important point is that there are plenty of hyperbolic groups. It is uh, not uh, uh, very like pathological definition. So the main set of examples uh, that you can uh, appreciate I have list, listed only three three examples. There are lots of other examples, and the whole point of this combination theorem business is to construct new examples. But I have uh, given only three examples here, which are appreciable by people who work in geometry and other things. So fundamental groups of closed negatively curved manifolds. So these are hyperbolic. So uh, this requires what is called milner schwarz lemma to prove this. Uh, it's not very difficult. So, and uh, 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 so, namely, uh, for instance, if I take hyperbolic manifolds, closed hyperbolic manifolds, then uh, uh, the fundamental groups of such things are uh, hyperbolic, okay, uh, as per this definition, hyperbolic group. Okay, so, and these were really the motivation behind defining hyperbolic groups. When Romo defined the hyperbolic groups, uh, these, were, these were the motivation, okay. And a particular case of this is, uh, uh, Orientable closed surface groups of genus bigger than I, I forgot to mention here genus bigger than equal to two. Okay, so those are the interesting case uh, genus zero atmosphere uh, trivial and genus one is not hyperbolic. We know that, but genus bigger than equal to two. So all of all of the surfaces we you know is a smooth surface. Let's say so they they admit hyperbolic structure and it follows just like the number one uh, and then that these groups are hyperbolic. Uh, there are elementary proofs also, but uh, yeah, this one way to see that uh, 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 the this uh, closed surface, closed orientable surface, smooth surfaces of genus bigger than equal to two, these are hyperbolic uh, groups, and also free groups are hyperbolic because if you take a free group, finite adjective free group, and you take a free basis, then with respect to the basis, the Kelly graphs are just trees, and we commented that uh, trees are zero hyperbolic, so therefore uh, the free groups are hyperbolic. And another kind of example comes uh, from what is called Newman spelling theorem. So he, he, he proves that suppose S uh, is the generating set and R is just a word in the free group on S. 
and then you are taking the one related group s bar r to the k where k is at least two so this kind of one related groups they are always hyperbolic so there are plenty of hyperbolic groups in fact there is a theorem of wolsensky which says that uh, almost every finitely uh, presented group is hyperbolic in some uh, uh, statistical sense okay so if you google for it you will easily find out the reference uh, so the next what i am going to do is that i am going to uh, give you another characterization of hyperbolicity because i am going to use it next so uh, so i am going to define what is called convergence action so suppose we have a group g which is acting through homeomorphism on a matrix space x okay then we call this action convergence action if the induced action on the space of distinct triples is properly discontinuous so you basically take uh, the subset of x cross x cross x uh, consisting of all points x y z such that x is not equal to y and y is not equal to z and z is not equal to x like that and uh, so you take the diagonal action in other words g dot x comma y comma z is simply gx comma gy comma gz so diagonal action so if you take that action then this uh, the action should be properly discontinuous so if that happens then you call it a, a convergence action so although it is not easy to see that uh, this uh, really i mean uh, the, the the term we are defining here is a convergence action and the definition doesn't say anything about convergence action i mean the, there is nothing like limit or something but this is not really the original definition the original definition was to kukia who defined it in a slightly uh, a different way <clears throat> okay inspired by the the clangian groups and so on so he gave another definition and then baudi showed that that is equivalent to this one so since this is much more easy to understand so therefore i am stating this definition so this is convergence action and uh, under this convergence action a limit point of g is the point of accumulation of some orbit of g so you take some point small x in capital x and look at the orbit g dot x and then uh, you take the points of accumulation those are the limit points and a limit point is called conical <coughs> if something like this holds so this is again a little technical and one cannot appreciate the terminology here but uh, this uh, the, the definitions the motivation behind these terms they come from hyperbolic spaces really so a uh, kleinian groups so so what is the definition so a limit point xi is called conical if there is uh, an infinite sequence gn of distinct elements in g and a pair of distinct points alpha beta in x such that limit of gn xi is alpha and on the complement of xi so this gn's converge uniformly so gn's are maps on this uh, x minus xi to x so on this complement gn's converge uniformly on compact subsets to the constant map beta so in particular if i take any point from x minus xi and apply gn's that sequence will converge to beta so this is this is called conical okay so typically if you if you know what some a little bit about uh, the uh, kleinian groups and so on it is only geometry so if you take a loxodromic element g and then uh, you know that g to the n is uh, going to infinity and g to the minus n is going to infinity so in this case uh, uh, this is this uh, uh, that will uh, this these both of these points are going to be conical these limits okay so <clears throat> uh, so this is a definition of convergence action and conical limit point so next uh, a limit point xi is called a bounded parabolic point if the stabilizer g xi is an infinite subgroup of g and it acts <coughs> on x minus z uh, properly with compact quotient so this is very special okay so uh, so generally one defines parabolic by saying that uh, uh, g z is infinite okay but uh, we want more so we want bounded parabolic so we also demand that we should act on x minus z uh with compact quotient so just like if you take a parabolic element in the uh, kleinian group setting then this uh, for instance if you take let's say z going to z plus 1 on the hyperbolic plane so then infinity this uh, uh, is a parabolic point for this uh, so we know this that is a uh, parabolic uh, uh, that is a parabolic uh, isometry okay 
and on the complement of xi, so it, this transformation acts uh, properly and cooperatively. So just using that, so that is uh, using that as the motivation. So we have here they define this bounded parametric point. Okay, but why why did I say all that thing? So now here comes the uh, the motivation. So Bowditch proves in 1996, uh, following some ideas of Grumov, that a finitely generated group G is hyperbolic if and only it admits convergence action on some compact metric space such that each limit point is conical. Okay, so this can be used as a new characterization or a new definition of hyperbolic groups. So here there is no Kelly of geometry, nothing. So he just takes uh, <coughs> the group G and it is acting on some compact metric space. So you can do some analysis here. Okay, <coughs> so this is a Bowditch's uh, uh, criterion for hyperbolicity. So next, that so this this is this is all about hyperbolic groups that I wanted to say. So next, uh, I want to define the next group with negative curvature properties, namely relative hyperbolic groups. So for that, I need some decoration. So so here is the thing. So what is called hyperbolic cone. So what is hyperbolic cone? So suppose X is a graph. So then we define a new graph, <coughs> X to the H, H for hyperbolic. So uh, I will call that hyperbolic cone over X. So this is a new graph. So the vertex set of this one is that uh, so you take Vx cross all the uh, non-negative integers, okay? And uh, <coughs> edges are defined as follows. So number one, V0, W0 are connected by an edge or length one, if V, W, R are adjacent in X. So, so point is that for every integer n, Vx cross n, so that level set, that uh, has, has the same graph structure abstractly, but the point is that uh, um, uh, uh, the lengths will be different. So for instance, in number three, it is saying that Vn, Wn are connected by an edge of length e to the minus n for all n, if Vw are adjacent to x. So all the Vx cross n, those, those uh, uh, <coughs> level sets, they have the same graph structure as Vx, but the lengths are decreasing when n is going to infinity. And uh, if you fix a point of Vx, some vertex V, then you take uh, the small V cross this Z uh, non-negative, then you will get a, a, a line. So Vn, number two is saying that Vn, comma Vn plus one are connected by an edge of length one, okay, for all V and all N. <coughs> So this is typically the uh, so if you so if you know what it is so as uh, if you take the uh, the uh, uh, these uh, uh, horror okay so horror spheres are like uh, uh, Euclidean planes okay so and then the horror can be think, thought of as this uh, Euclidean plane cross uh, zero infinity and uh, this uh, okay so that, that is uh, playing the role of Vx here okay and if you go upward. Towards infinity, then this uh, this uh, or this distance in the or spheres, so they are exponentially decreasing. So that is the motivation behind this uh, hyperbolic cone. <coughs> so uh, I have defined a graph, but I am not checking here. But one can check that this is a, a, a hyperbolic graph. Okay. <coughs> I recall so this uh, hyperbolic cone we have defined. So how do I define? So we take v x cross z bigger than or equal to zero. Uh, so this is going to be the vertex set. And then the edge set, one, two, three, they are defining the edge set. So what I am doing is that every uh, level set Vx cross n, that has the same graph structure as uh, uh, same set of edges as uh, there were in uh, uh, x, okay? Only thing is that in the nth slice, the, the edges are uh, of length e to the minus n, okay? And then uh, for any vertex v in x, v cross z bigger than or equal to zero, that is just a line. So vn to vn plus one, I am joining by edge of length one. So this is hyperbolic graph. So this is a mental picture. So uh, as I go upward, this is uh, decreasing. The, uh, the diameter of the sets are decreasing exponentially. So this is the definition of, so why, why did I mention on this uh, hyperbolic uh, cone? Because I had to define relatively hyperbolic groups. So this is the next set of groups with uh, negative curvature property. 
So what you do is the following. So G is a finitely generated group and H1, H2, Hn, suppose these are finitely generated infinite index subgroups. And suppose AS is a generating set, it's a finite generating set uh, of G such that uh, AS contains a finite generating set for each HI. So generally from the definition, these, these are uh, omitted, but uh, they are implied. But I'll uh, uh, assume everything for simplicity. And so now what I do is that each coset GHI on that, I will construct a hyperbolic cone. So basically the idea is that these HIs, these are like non-hyperbolic pieces. So they are preventing uh, from uh, preventing G from being hyperbolic. So we will destroy the non-hyperbolicity there by constructing a hyperbolic cone over each coset GHI. Okay. And then the definition is that if after gluing these hyperbolic cones to the Kelly graph of G, if the resulting graph is hyperbolic, then we say that G is hyperbolic relative to HIs. So I have uh, uh, actually moved a lot of things under the carpet. So the hyperbolicity, this uh, relative hyperbolicity was defined by Krumov. And then later on, Fav defined relative hyperbolicity in a different way. Okay. Uh, uh, so he called it a uh, strong relative hyperbolicity. And uh, then Bowditch and some other people, so Bowditch was mainly uh, uh, behind this, proved that these two definitions of Grumov's and the Fav's strong relative hyperbolicity are, 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 are equivalent. Okay. And also, uh, as far we have seen that uh, we had the characterization of hyperbolic group in a different way. So similarly, uh, th there are many other characterization of uh, uh, relatively hyperbolic groups, but I will not have a scope or time to say all that. So I'll, I'll just be satisfied with this one and I'll, I'll now uh, show the following theorem for you. So this is an analog of Bowditch's theorem. Bowditch proved that if a uh, group is hyperbolic, if something happens, convergence, action, and so on. So here also, uh, Asli Yaman, so C proves in 2004 that if a group, a group G is hyperbolic with respect to finite collection H1, H2, H10 of uh, subgroups, if and only if it admits a convergence action again on some compact metric space. But in this case, we are assuming that the limit points are either conical or bounded parabolic. So this is a bounded parabolic is a new thing that we are allowing. And number two is that the stabilizers of these parabolic points, they are precisely the various conjugates of these HIs. So this gives a new characterization of uh, this uh, relative hyperbolicity. Why I am saying is that uh, I will leave this to explain one of the theorems. Later on. So, so this is these are the two, uh, you can think of them as alternative definitions of relative hyperbolicity. So now we, I propose, uh, I, I'll, I'll show you another kind of equivalent definition. So for this one, I need this one. So uh, uh, suppose X is a graph and Y is a collection of uh, subsets. So uh, generally we'll assume these are connected subgraphs, YIs. So then what I do is that for every YI, I introduce a new vertex that is not inside X, new vertex VI. And uh, I, what I do is that uh, every vertex of yi i am joining with vi okay and uh, constructing a new graph so this is called electrified graph because you see that uh, in the new graph each yi i has diameter at most 2 okay so yi is a, a, a priori they are infinite subgraphs but in the new graph they have diameter uh, 2 so that's why we are calling it electrified graph okay so i will denote this uh, new graph by x to the e e for electrified and a metric by d to the e, okay. Uh, so now the point is that uh, this, I had a graph, infinite graph, and I have collapsed a lot of things, okay. This y is they were infinite diameter set, and I have collapsed them. I made them into a finite diameter thing. So uh, uh, as if I, had lot, uh, I have lost a lot of information. So to remedy that, so what we do is uh, the following. So this, uh, uh, so uh, this uh, new notion is uh, due to uh, the Hamani Girardel Poshin in the very famous uh, recent paper. But uh, the angular metric, I, uh, this term I learned from uh, a paper by uh, MJ and Hamani. Okay, so what is this? So we had the electrified graph and uh, uh, yi is of course diameter two six uh, at most diameter two. But uh, we are defining a new metric now. Uh, so what is this new metric? 
So if I have vertices u v inside the a vertex set of y i, what you do is that you consider all the paths h paths in the x to the e that join u v, but uh, the the, the uh, which do not pass through the uh, the uh, vertex v i. Okay. So y i uh, every so y what is y i? So y i is a subset of x and Every vertex of y is joined to v i by some some edge of length one. Okay, so I want uh, the paths joining u v to be avoiding that vertex. Okay, so this uh, this is going to give you a, a new kind of distance. So this we are calling it angular distance of u v. Okay, so this a priori will be bigger than two of course, and uh, we will call it uh, angular metric. It may happen that uh, joining U V there is no path. Uh, it can happen, but in our case, it will not never happen. So yeah, here we are, we, we are assuming that Y is uh, almost all the time so uh, connected subgraphs. But in general, they, that is not assumed. And then they also allow this distance to be infinite. There is no harm in that. And uh, so so the, why do I say all that? So here is a new um, so I I give a new characterization of this. Uh, so I need one more thing. A cylindrical action. So this was defined by Bowditch in a paper where he proves this uh, that uh, famous thing that uh, uh, mapping class group acts uh, uh, cylindrically on uh, arc graphs. So what is cylindrical action? So suppose the group G is act acting by isometries on some hyperbolic graph. Okay. Then we say that the action is cylindrical if for every epsilon positive there are uh, positive constant R and L such that if Two vertices x, y are given, and they are they are far apart. Distance of x, y is bigger than equal to r. Then the number of group elements g, small g, such that distance of x and g x is less than equal to epsilon, and distance of y and g y less than equal to epsilon is at most n. So this is like properness on the induced action on uh, x cross x. Okay, or uh, you can think of this uh, uh, as a, uh, the group is acting properly on the geodesics. Of x, okay. So, so let me repeat. So, what is the cylindrical action? So, if I take two vertices which are far apart, and I want to see what all elements move these endpoints just a little bit, so that's a finite connection. So, this is the cylindrical action, and this is the thing that I wanted to say. So, this is a kind of new characterization of relative atomicity obtained from the work of Egio and uh, this Dahmani Girard del Osin and independent uh, and also the Osins. Uh, Acylindrical hyperbolic groups. This paper. So they they prove uh, the following thing. Suppose uh, G is a group generated by finite set S, H1, H2, H A, and this is a collection of subgroups. And uh, for simplicity, for us, uh, we can simply assume that this contains a, a finite generating set of H I. H, then G is hyperbolic relative to H I. So we defined this notion before, which was due to Bowditch and far and uh, so on. So uh, what is this? So number one is the this uh, electrified graph, where in the Cayley graph I am electrifying the cosets G H I. So for every G H I, I am constructing new vertex outside the Cayley graph and so on. That electrified graph should be hyperbolic, okay? And the G action on this hyperbolic space, hyperbolic graph, should be cylindrical, like we have defined before. And the angular metric on each G H I makes it into a proper metric space, okay? So if all the three things are satisfied. Then, then this hyperbolic. So this is an if and only uh, condition. So you can think of this uh, as a new characterization, a different, or you can take it as a definition of relative hyperbolicity. Okay, but this has more to it. So, uh, so using these kind of ideas, now Osin has introduced a new set of groups which are called asymmetrically hyperbolic groups. So, what are, what are these objects? So, uh, G is any group. So, in this uh, case, we do not assume they are finally generated. So this is called asymmetrically hyperbolic. If it admits a generating set S, which may not be finite a priori, such so that the Cayley graph is a non-elementary hyperbolic graph. Okay, and the G action on this one is uh, this Cayley graph is uh, uh, asymmetrical. Okay, <coughs> <coughs> so this generalizes both hyperbolic groups and relatively hyperbolic groups. <coughs> So I have defined for you Cayley graph, uh, hyperbolic graph, and cylindrical. So I have to explain what is non-elementary. So for specialists, of course, they know what it is. So this simply means that these hyperbolic graphs uh, have more than two points in the boundary. 
okay so for for you what i will say is for some some people who are not familiar with this thing so i'll go as follows so given a uh, uh, constant k bigger than equal to 1 and c bigger than equal to 0 and some interval i in r and a matrix with x a map from the interval to x is called a kc quasi geodesic if this two inequalities hold okay so if i did not have the constant c then it will be simply some biases okay but i allow some additive error but it is a uh, uh, it is independent of ht so i i i, I allow some uniformly small bounded error okay so this these are called uh, quasi geodesics uh, when kc are not important we will just call it quasi geodesic and when the interval is zero to infinity we will call it a quasi geodesic ring so zero to in, uh, zero to infinity this interval to x if i have a quasi geodesic then i call it a quasi geodesic ring okay so more generally one can define this for uh, any metric space if i have any map from some metric space y to x which satisfies this condition where of course i have to replace this absolute value s minus t by the distance of y and so on so that will be called qi embedding i will need that later and i will recall this one again so this is a quasi geodesic now when is hyperbolic graph called non elementary if it has three quasi geodesic rays at least three quasi geodesic rays starting from of this point p and let's call them alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 such that when i join alpha i n and alpha j n by a geodesic okay i is not equal to j then this geodesics uh, they are going far away from uh, uh, i don't i am sorry so uh, I, i really wanted to say that they are not going to infinity okay but i uh, uh, type uh, going to infinity no so this distance uh, this is wrong whatever i have added in the definition is wrong so the distance from this uh, uh, <coughs> uh this uh, point p to this uh, geodesic joining alpha i n and alpha j n they should be bounded strips okay so then i call it a uh, non elementary hyperbolic graph okay so the definition that i put here is wrong it is not going to infinity it is supposed to be bounded so this is uh, not something arbitrary or uh, some uh, pathological definition because kelly graphs of any non virtually cyclic hyperbolic groups okay where i am choosing finite geodesic set they are non elementary hyperbolic graphs so those groups which are virtually cyclic they are hyperbolic and they are called elementary hyperbolic and all other uh, uh, hyperbolic groups are uh, that's why called non elementary hyperbolic groups and similarly if i if i choose a uh, um, uh, relatively hyperbolic uh, uh, graph a relatively hyperbolic group okay then this uh, corresponding electrified uh, graph okay assuming the group is not uh, virtually cyclic they will be non elementary hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic graphs so okay so now giving the after giving the definition of relative hyperbolic uh, groups and as uh, cylindric hyperbolic groups now i want to give you some examples to show that these are uh, not uh, <coughs> really yet of course i gave you some examples of uh, hyperbolic groups and you can easily see that uh, any hyperbolic group is uh, relatively hyperbolic because you can choose the trivial subgroup with respect to trivial subgroup it will be relatively hyperbolic but the original motivation behind defining this uh, relatively hyperbolic groups So it was defined by Grumov. So they came from this following example. So if you take a finite volume complete hyperbolic manifold or uh, yeah pinch negatively curved manifold, even any manifolds, okay. So in this case, we can prove that uh, um, there are uh, one can show that there are finite many cusps. So this is a result of uh, your line. And let us call the cusp C1, C2, Ck finite many cusps. And you take the cusp subgroups Hi. so uh, he proves that uh, his cars uh, ha have a kind of colored neighborhood some manifold cross zero infinity kind of neighborhood and uh, this hi's are this uh, fundamental groups of these manifolds okay <clears throat> so these are cars of groups and then g is hyperbolic relative to hi's okay so this was proved by uh, um, i think this was sketched by uh, grumov and rigorously proved by fab in his uh, paper on relatively hyperbolic groups okay so this is the main motivation behind the definition of relatively hyperbolic groups so another hands on uh, this thing that you can easily check is the following suppose uh, h1 h2 h n this is a collection of uh, non trivial groups and you take their free product so then that is relatively hyperbolic with respect to h i okay 
So you can think of this as a combination theorem. And uh, again, Farr proved that if I have a hyperbolic group G and a quasi isometrically embedded subgroup H, which is also weakly man normal. So man normal means a uh, subgroup uh, intersected with its conjugates, non trivial conjugates, that is uh, trivial. Weakly man normal means this intersection is going to be finite. So if I take hyperbolic group, and a weakly malnormal subgroup, which is also quasi asymmetrically embedded. So, it, it, what, what does it mean? So, H is finally generated. So, it has its Kelly graph, and the Kelly graph matrix restricts to H matrix. And then the inclusion map from H to G, that is a, a quasi isometric embedding. Like I have defined this, uh, like in the definition of uh, uh, quasi geodesic. So, we have the inclusion map from H to G, and that is roughly speaking by ellipses, up to additive area. So that is QI embedded sub. So in that case, G is hyperbolic relative to H. So this was Farr's uh, result, but Bowditch also proved the converse of this. That if G is hyperbolic group and H is some subgroup with respect to which it is relatively hyperbolic, then it has to be quasi convex, I mean QI embedded and melanoma, weakly melanoma. So this gives uh, the set of uh, some 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 flavor, some uh, ideas about the examples of uh, relatively hyperbolic groups. So next, I'll uh, say something about asymptotic hyperbolic groups. As I say, so these generalizes all of this uh, hyperbolic and relative hyperbolic. So because you see that if I have a relative hyperbolic group, then I will take the electrified graph, and on that the group is acting as cylindrical. Okay, and as I said, if it is not actually cyclic, then uh, uh, you will have non-elementary graph. So therefore, they will be asymptotic hyperbolic. So relatively hyperbolic groups are asymptotic hyperbolic group. But this is a much, much larger collection than the hyperbolic group because we are also allowing uh, non finite generated groups. Okay? So, here are some, some other important examples. So, all of these examples are taken from the paper of Oshin, which is uh, titled the uh, Asylumic Hyperbolic Groups. So, here are the, the, these examples. So, if S is a finite type orientable surface, then mapping class group of S, we, uh, we know that this is a standard result that it is not hyperbolic with respect to any finite collection of subgroups. But, uh, but uh, it is uh, proved by this, uh, for instance, uh, theorem of uh, uh, Bowditch that this is asymmetrically hyperbolic. This acts asymmetrically on the curve graph. <clears throat> and uh, the outer autonomous group of Fn, when n is bigger than or equal to 3, this is asymmetrically hyperbolic. Okay, so this was essentially proved by Hosin and based Bina uh, and uh, Fujiwara. Okay, and uh, so these are two groups, MCG, S. And out they are they are they are most uh, they are uh, very famous groups and uh, uh, the most studied groups in geometric group theory. So both of these are hyperbolic, uh, asymmetrical hyperbolic groups. And here is a funny example for people algebra-minded people. So if you take any field K and take the polynomial ring in two variables x y, then the automorphism groups. So we know about uh, what are the automorphisms. Okay, this is a, a <coughs> classical result. So this automorphism group is asymptotic hyperbolic. Of course, we know that this is not, uh, for instance, if K is an infinite field, this is not going to be a, a finitely generated group. But this will be asymptotic hyperbolic. This was also proved uh, in the paper of Hosin and Minasian. Okay, and then one related groups with at least three generators. These are asymptotic hyperbolic. Cat uh, zero groups with rank one elements. So I don't have time to explain all that. So these are uh, uh, these are asymptotic hyperbolic. And if you want more examples, then you should look at this uh, uh, survey article by Anthony Genevoy. So, uh, uh, hyperbolicity in cat zero Q complex. So he gives a lot of examples, a lot of other examples, like which bread groups are uh, asymptotic hyperbolic and so on. Lots of examples are there. So, this uh, finishes the first part of the talk. So, unfortunately, we are turning late. So, <clears throat> now the second part, the combination theorem. So, namely, so we have described the groups. So now we want to know in which way can we combine these groups and create the same kind of groups. Okay. So the first and most important of this is this base inner frame theorem. So it was published in 1992 Journal of Differential Geometry. So uh, what is this uh, theorem? So it is saying that if I have a finite directed graph Y and the script G is a graph of groups on Y. Okay. So this means that every vertex uh, V uh, for every vertex V, we have a group GV, and for every edge, uh, uh, we have a group GE. So we assume that these all all these groups are hyperbolic groups, 
and then there are homomorphism injective homomorphism from g to gb and g to gw whenever e connects v and w okay so these uh, <coughs> these homomorphisms are assumed to be quasi isometric invariants so you choose your favorite generating set for ge gb and gw with this to that they will have metric g gb so in the kelly graph they are sitting so they will have metric and uh, with this with those matrices so then uh, with those matrix then we have this uh, um, quasi isometric embedding then this the fundamental group of this uh, this uh, graph of group this is hyperbolic if the hollis flare condition holds so i will say a little bit about this uh, technique this uh, hollis flare condition is technical a little bit well uh, but the point is here is that i have put this only if in bracket because they did not put the only only proof was uh, only uh, proof this came from somebody in some gastrain and other people so they proved this only okay so uh, that is that and uh, uh, this uh, so i will explain uh, this uh, little bit of this theorem so for uh, so in this uh, as we are saying this, this is a directed graph okay so here we are also allowing loops and if i have loops that means some direction is there so depending on that so there will be two homomorphisms always for every edge i have two homomorphisms one is forward and one is backward so forward direction is going to the vertex v so i have some homomorphism i have inverted phi e v and then backward phi e w <coughs> g e to g w that is a homomorphism so this data is a graph of group data okay so for instance if i have just an edge e w two distinct vertices connected by some edge e to w directed so then i will have two groups g v g w and g just three groups and two homomorphisms that will be that and uh, then uh, uh, this uh, resulting pi one of that that will be simply the amalgamated free product like that uh, so this number two is saying that the quasi isometric embedding i explained already what it means okay and uh, at pi one g as i said in general it will be slightly technical but as i said so if i have just an edge so then this is uh, uh, i mean just a uh, uh, line uh, of length one then it is simply uh, the amalgamated free product Okay, so in general, it is a little bit technical. So I will quickly say what it is. So, what, so uh, given this graph of group data, you construct a topological space by constructing k g one of each vertex group and each edge group. So then we know that given these homomorphisms from G to G V, there is a corresponding continuous map, so sequential map from k g t comma one to k g v one, and similarly k g one to k g w one. So, using this homomorphism, what you can do is that you can uh, construct the mapping uh, torus, uh, sorry, mapping cylinder. So, K G E uh, one uh, cross minus one interval minus one one. So, construct that cylinder and glue these uh, ends to the corresponding the K G one spaces of the vertex vertex spaces. Okay, K G E one and K G W one. So, in this way, for every every edge, you do this. So, in this way, you get a, a complex. Okay. And you compute the fundamental, you find the fundamental group of that. So that is uh, that is the fundamental group of this uh, um, graph of group. Okay, flaring condition is technical. So, uh, um, so I will just uh, say one just example. Uh, so 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 one application, very uh, simple application of this theorem of Bessonian is that three products of hyperbolic groups are hyperbolic. So this in this case flaring is trivially true. So I did not explain what it is, but this is easy. And then, if G1, G2 hyperbolic groups and H is weakly malnormal common subgroup, which is Q embedded in both, then the amalgamated free product is hyperbolic. And this is this is where I will explain a little bit about flaring. So, what is this? So, uh, based on a fair define what is called hyperbolic automorphism of a group. So, given a group G and some automorphism F. Okay. So, uh, if I have a hyperbolic automorphism, then the symmetric product, corresponding symmetric product, is hyperbolic. So I will just quickly explain what it is. So what is hyperbolic automorphism? So suppose G is generated by finite set S, some automorphism given small f. So it is called hyperbolic if there is a constant lambda bigger than one and m bigger than equal to one. Such so that if I take any element W of G, such so that the distance from identity to W is bigger than equal to m, then the distance of uh, one and m W and one and f inverse W maximum of that will be bigger than Equal to lambda times one w. So at least a for a inverse, uh, we'll take w to some some word, some element which is far away, more far away from identity. So this is the flaring condition.
Okay. So. Uh, Pranav Dad. Yeah. Yeah. How many slides do you have? Okay. So maybe I'll try to wrap up in ten minutes. Is it fine? Uh, could you do it in five minutes because next uh, speaker's okay. timing is from. Okay. Okay. So let me. Uh, so I'll skip this part and go to the uh, this the next slide. So what is this? So uh, so this this was a very uh, nice theorem and it has produced a lot of it, it inspired a lot of research in this uh, field to find similar combination theorem. So I'll quickly say something. So uh, so Swarup proved that uh, if I have amalgams of uh, groups, does that uh, H is Q embedded in both, but Mann-Norman in just one of them? Then we have a it's slightly general uh, than base phenophane's application. And uh, retargeting uh, in 1997 so proved a similar theorem for um, Lee Mosher. A very interesting example came from Lee Mosher, 1997, where he found an exact sequence like this, where G is hypergonic, and F2 is a free group on two generators. So he took two C dinosaur, he invented C dinosaur, and uh, then he took certain power. So it is like a short key construction. Okay, this is this was a very new construction, very, very uh, new example of his scientist. And then in 1997, Basefina handle and Basefina fin handle, they construct a free by free example. So in this case, I have, in the above case, I have pi 1 is and F2. They replace pi 1 is by free group. Okay. So, and uh, uh, yeah, so in particular, free by cyclic hyperbolic groups were, were constructed by this uh, uh, Basefina fin handle. And Brinkman then showed that, uh, uh, so they, he completely characterized which. Uh, um, uh, free by cyclic are hyperbolic. So he said that it should not fix any conjugacy class. If the automorphism doesn't fix any conjugacy class, then this is hyperbolic. Okay. And in uh, Kapovich in 2000 proved a similar combination theorem. So as I said, uh, we have this free by cyclic. So this is coming from the automorphism and similarly the, the pi 1 is. And Kapovich generalized that. And uh, uh, Kapovich, this is Ilya Kapovich in 2000. He proved a theorem for ascending HNM extension. And uh, some of the things, uh, these are not important. So this one is very important. So Farb Musher uh, defined a convex co-compact subgroup of mapping class group. So they, uh, they, they, they find, uh, so they were asking this, this, uh, this example of Musher, where this uh, surface by free group. So they were asking uh, in the question, which groups are allowed so that I get hyperbolic. Okay, so they they prove that if this uh, this is the case, then that that quotient Q should be uh, should have Q I embedded orbit in the triangular space. So mapping class group acts on the triangular space. So if they prove that if a finite integer group Q has a, a quasi isometric embedding uh, orbit map is quasi isometric embedding, then the corresponding this extension is hyperbolic. And then the later on uh, um, Kent Leininger okay and Hamilton independently they they showed, uh, they, they found the opposite direction of this theorem. That is, it is if and only, if, okay? That is that. And uh, so similar other things are there, so I will just keep some of the things. So Alexander Martin proved, so these are, these are, these are theorems about uh, this complex group, I don't have time. Only thing that, that is very important here, I mentioned this is Taudon Taylor, uh, following the far motion, they also found a new exam, I mean, they defined this, uh, they found this uh, general construction. They, give, they they are giving sufficient condition for some free by uh, some other hyperbolic groups to be hyperbolic. So they give a characterization. So which subgroups Q will will have uh, this uh, hyperbolic extension? Okay. So that is in 2014. Okay. Uh, so what they do is that uh, so they they, they in the so they prove a general theorem, but they could not find a more general example than free by group, free by free. So these free groups. The, uh, these are the, the new thing about this thing is that they are different from um, uh, uh, this uh, bisphenophane handle in that uh, uh, they uh, <coughs> they generalize that condition. The bisphenophane handle example, the, the quotient free group was very special, so they removed that condition. And uh, 2018, very recent, so uh, this person C. Wayanik, so he further generalized this, okay, uh, finding more uh, free by free algebraic examples, okay. Uh, so that is that was the exa that was the thing for uh, uh, this this thing for um, hyperbolic groups. But I'm afraid I don't have time to explain uh, this thing for uh, 
relative hyperbolic means the combination theorem for relative hyperbolic. I just mentioned a few. So Dahamani proves the combination theorem for relative hyperbolic groups in 2003. So the uh, so uh, Swaroop, uh, Gaddesh Swaroop, he asked, uh, can we find a similar combination theorem like this in the theorem for relative hyperbolic groups? So Dahamani proved in 2003 something like that, but his his, proof, his uh, theorem was very special, and he assumed very strong condition. Only thing is that he used this Ashley Ayman's criterion. So he uh, he also proved the graph of groups, the hyperbolic groups, and he made it act on some compact space and proved that it satisfies these uh, conditions, converges action, and then uh, all all points are conical or bounded parabolic, and he derived this. But his theorem was uh, completely generalized in uh, Mahan, M. J. and Lawrence Lipsch's uh, theorem in 2006, who proved an exact analog of this Bayes-Binet theorem. Under very natural condition, he proved this theorem. And one very recent interesting development was uh, by Pritam Ghosh, our uh, this thing colleague, and uh, and Dahmani Lee independently in 2020. They they sh they showed which free by cyclic extensions are going to be hyperbolic. Okay. <coughs> Uh, they they show that uh, if the automorphism that you are taking to the, to this uh, construction is uh, exponentially growing, then it will be uh, this is very recent. And uh, <coughs> for for uh, this uh, asymptotic hyperbolic groups, we don't have much uh, uh, new developments. So we we just have one single paper by Osei Minishian where they are giving uh, sufficient condition on a graph of groups to be asymptotic hyperbolic. So here is a kind of simple theorem. So if I have uh, amalgamated three product A star C over B and A not equal to C not equal to B and C is weakly normal in one of them, then it is ascendant hyperbolic. <coughs> and then some some other paper of Indira Chatterjee and Alex are there. Okay, so like uh, so this is can be thought of as a complex of group example. Uh, but this is these are all that is known about uh, the combination theorem. So here the I quickly say what are the questions. So generalized based in of in theorem for, for from graphs of groups to complex of groups. This is actually completely open. Uh, only two cases are uh, proved. In one case, uh, the uh, max from the phase groups to the smaller phase groups. Those are uh, quasi isometries. And uh, when the uh, the complex is asymmetrical, uh, okay, asymmetrical complex. The, these do these uh, two extreme cases are known. Nothing else is known. So find new theorems in here. And uh, the next question is that for graph of groups, even um, flaring condition is very mysterious. So, can you find some special cases of graph of groups where flaring will be implied and there will be new theorems? Okay. And combination theorems for uh, asymptotic hyperbolic. This is, as I said, completely open. No, nothing is known almost. And the last one is that uh, uh, this uh, free convex complex. So, so uh, all the convex complex groups of MCGs that are known uh, till now, they are, they are all virtually free. So are they non virtually free? So this is a very big open question. So with that, uh, I will finish the talk. If you want the references, we can uh, ask so more me. I will send you the references. Sorry for the delay. Thank you. Thank you, Pranabda. Uh, let's thank the speaker, uh, maybe virtually, or if you want to clap, unmute yourself.